Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to today's video. Today we are downgrading from iOS 14.2 to 14.1. As always, staying on a lower iOS version betters your chances of receiving a jailbreak sooner than later. So iOS 14.1 is still being signed, although that could change at any point now. So I suggest everyone that's on iOS 14.2 to do this downgrade process. Now the steps don't change very much from version to version, if at all. So if you guys are watching this in the future, uh, just switch out the target version of iOS that we're downgrading to. In this video, it's 14.1, but you know, in a couple weeks, it could be downgrading to 14.2, etc. Also, I'm gonna quickly breeze through these steps in today's video, but if you guys want a longer, more in-depth tutorial, check out Tanner's. Uh, he did an awesome one last time around. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started with the downgrade process. The first thing we're going to do on our iOS device is head to the settings app, go to your iCloud, uh, go to Find My and make sure Find My iPhone is turned off. I'm gonna enter my passcode real quickly. So now that Find My iPhone is turned off, let's go ahead and just connect the iPhone to the computer. And again, we're gonna go over on our Mac or Windows-based PC, whatever the case on Mac, you're using Finder. On Windows, you're using iTunes. Either way, just navigate to your iPhone summary tab and trust the connection with your iPhone if you haven't already. Trust it on the computer, trust it on the device itself. So our iOS device is uh, recognized by the computer. So now we should land on this screen right here. As you can see, I'm running iOS 14.2. This is also identifiable on the device by going to general about, and it will show you your iOS version right there as well. So this is exactly where we want to be. Next step, we're going to go to Safari or Chrome in the internet browser and go to this site right here. Link down below in this video's description. This will let us download the IPSW file or the iPhone software file uh, to restore to iOS 14.1. So in this case, I'm using my iPhone 6S Plus. I know a bit of a throwback, but I thought why not? So. I'm going to navigate to iPhone and navigate all the way down, way down here to iPhone 6S Plus. Again, this tutorial works on all iOS devices that support iOS 14. Um, so now that we're here, as you can see, iOS 14.2 and 14.1 are coming up in green. That means they're both signed and you can restore to that iOS version. Again, in the future, if you're doing a downgrade from 14.3 to say 14.2, just make sure they show up in green here. So in this video, we're downgrading to 14.1. We're going to select that file right there. Scroll down uh, to where we see the download button, and wow, there's a lot of ads on this site, but you're gonna go ahead and click download right there. And now it's going to download the IPSW file to your computer. Now I went ahead and did this uh, step before recording the video, and uh, if I go back to Finder, I actually threw this IPSW file for my device on the desktop. So. Navigating back to the iPhone summary tab, uh, here is we where we're going to restore our iPhone now. Now, if you guys want to keep data, make sure you uh, back up your iPhone, uh, not to iCloud, but to your local computer, either Mac or Windows. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that real quickly. All right, so if you guys are wanting to keep your data now that your iPhone's backed up, before we do the restore or after, it doesn't really matter, I'm gonna do this step real quickly. We're gonna go ahead and click Manage Backups right there. It pops up our iPhone backups. If you right click and go Show in Finder uh, and enter this backup and open this info.plist with uh, basically a text editor, I'm using Proper Tree. Uh, and essentially you're looking for product version. And as you guys can see, it says 14.2. Well, if you guys just change this to 14.1 and uh, save that file, uh, I think uh, if I just go Command S, yeah, it saved it. Um, now you're able to restore this backup, even though you created it on iOS 14.2, 
you can now restore it on iOS 14.1, which we're going to uh, be on in just a second. But our data is secure now, and um, we can use that backup at a later time. So now jumping into the actual, actual restore process, um, I've had a lot of problems doing the check for update uh, method. So in this method, we're just gonna actually restore the iPhone and erase all of its contents and settings. But again, we just created that backup of our data to restore once this software OS restore is done. So uh, on a Mac computer, you're going to hold down Option. Again, on Windows, you're going to hold down Shift and then click the Restore button and it's going to pop up uh, this dialog box where you can select your custom or uh, preferred IPSW file. Again, iOS 14.1 in this case, just click Open and click Restore. And uh, now your iOS device is going to restore back to iOS 14.1. I'll go ahead and skip that part in this video or speed it up or something like that. And we'll come back at the very end, restore our user data, and uh, then we should be all set running iOS 14.1 with all of our data intact. Be right back, guys. All right, so it looks like the restore has just finished up within Finder here. It says your iPhone has been restored to factory settings and is restarting, so I'll let it boot up, and then it should pop back up within Finder. There we are right here. It looks like we're going to have to trust the connection again. I'll give it a second for the phone to finish booting up. All right, so now that the phone's back on, again on the computer, we can click Trust. I guess go through a couple steps here on the iPhone. We might have to make it to the home screen. Just sign into your Wi-Fi network to activate your phone. Oh, actually, now it has popped up within iTunes or Finder on your computer, and we actually don't have to continue setting up the phone anymore because we're going to restore from the backup that we just modified to uh, allow us to restore it to iOS 14.1. All right, so I quickly went through the entire setup process setting this phone up as a new phone, but you guys don't actually have to do it. I basically did it for this tutorial to show you guys that we're back on iOS 14.1 but we don't have any of our user data or our previous backup yet. So again, to do that, we can head back to the computer. And like I said, you don't actually have to finish setting up the phone. You can immediately restore your backup of your iPhone. Again, this is the one that we modified to be an iOS 14.1 backup instead of 14.2. So now that it's modified, again, if you guys missed that step, take a look earlier in this video. But since we modified it, we can go ahead and click restore and uh, we'll give it a second for the restore to start. And now, again, this second part, this restore now, is just of user data. The first restore was the actual operating system. So that pretty much wraps up this video. I'll wait for the phone to turn back on once this restore has completed. I'm guessing it's just restarting right now. So just want to show you guys that this process works. All right, so now that the phone has finished this second restore of our data, we can actually close our computer now. I'm gonna go ahead and stop my screen recording real fast uh, and go ahead and save this just so I can show you guys later in this video, but we no longer need our computer. You can actually disconnect your phone from that and uh, just finalize these on-screen steps here. Not going to set up Touch ID for this tutorial or a passcode, but I guarantee you they will work. Again, it's just gonna skip these steps so I can get to the home screen. Setting up everything later in settings, and here we go, guys. There is my uh, setup from the beginning of this video, but just to verify right here, we are on iOS 14.1 now. So yes, devices like the iPhone 6S all the way up to the iPhone 10 now can jailbreak with the check rain jailbreak, but it still is a good idea to remain on these lower iOS iterations just in case we get an exploit with a semi-tethered jailbreak. Instead of having to boot with the computer, we can use the Uncover app, for example, even on these devices when that jailbreak comes out. So it's always best, whatever device you have, to stay on the lowest version of iOS that you can. Anyhow, I hope this video helped out. Please subscribe to the channel if you want to see more content from us. Thank you so much for watching, but until next time, this is Tony, signing out.